I'm Gail Bland, and I'm guessing most of you who are viewing this breakout session are getting ready to retire or perhaps are already retired. I retired about almost eight years ago now, and I must say it was a process. It didn't just happen overnight. Parts of it I was more aware of than other parts, but let me explain. Do you remember that old Calgon commercial in the 70s where the harried woman is standing in her kitchen and kids are at her knees and dogs are bark barking and she's telling about her overwhelming day and she utters that famous line from the commercial, Calgon, take me away. And then the next scene is of her lounging in an oversized bathtub full of bubbles without a care in the world. Well, that in some ways was how I thought of retirement, but substitute the bubble bath for a beach. I imagined in my mind some undetermined place and time, but I really had no clue what it actually would look like for me, except I was pretty sure it would involve naps, beaches, and lots of me time. After all, I had worked hard as a wife, mom, and a nurse, and I deserved it. Then in February 2011, I was diagnosed with cancer, and I became acutely aware that our days are numbered and we should treat them that way. Psalm 90.12 tells us that. So during my six months of treatment and being willingly and lovingly served in so many beautiful ways, I was starting to rethink retirement from a different perspective. I didn't want to waste those years in meaningless uh, self-centered activity like being preoccupied with my health issues or being overwhelmed with worry. So I made a conscious decision to treat retirement as a gift, a gift that I could use to, to give to others. Colossians 3.23 tells us, whatever we do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. I could give to others and in doing so, bring glory to the giver by treating retirement in a different way than just being self-centered. I had heard many times that the Bible really doesn't talk about retirement, except in Genesis, um, in regards to the, the Levites. But the Bible speaks volumes about continued service to the Lord all the days of our life. For instance, Joshua, when he was somewhere between 85 and 100 years old, the Lord visited him and told him, Joshua, you still have a lot of land to possess. No naps for Joshua. But seriously, God plans our days from our first breath to the day he calls us home. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that he has a hope and a future for us. And Proverbs 16, 9 says, In his heart a man plants his course, but the Lord determines his steps. For sure, God's ways are certainly higher than our ways. So why not seek his guidance and direction in how and where to best serve him in our retirement years? And then be ready and willing to respond to the opportunities that he puts in our paths. So hopefully over the next 20 some minutes or so, I can share some insights that will help all of us bear fruit in service to the Lord for many years to come. The first step in any new thing is usually the hardest. I titled my session, Retirement, Don't Take It Lying Down for that very reason. Your someday, someday I'll do this, someday I'll do that, needs to be now. We need to get up and go. We can't take it lying down. We're not promised a certain number of days. 
frankly, you've probably been serving in some capacity or another already. But is it with the intent of bringing glory to God in your service? Service is an expression of the gospel, sometimes without even using words. When our focus is on him in our serving, it becomes so much more than just volunteering. It has eternal value, not because of us, but because of him working in and through us. Philippians 1 6 tells us that we can be confident that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He calls us to it, he equips us for it, and he empowers us through it. He never stops working in us. A good place to start is with a reboot of your personal prayer life and quiet time. Our public life can only be as powerful as our private life prepares us for. We are blessed to have so many good authors, devotional book writers, Bible study writers in our day and time. And I also find journaling my prayer thoughts helpful. But there is no substitution to being in the Word and on your knees for yourself. It is making that connection between faith and works. Remember, belief is the root of faith. Works is the fruit of faith. Spending time with the Lord also gives him the opportunity to speak to us, to tell us what his thoughts are for us, and to answer our questions that we have voiced to him in our prayers. And then we can ask him, what is it you would have me do with the rest of the time I have? And then listen and start to think seriously about perhaps unfinished business, things you've always wanted to do but never had the time. Are there any opportunities in that area that you can think of? For example, I have always loved horses and wanted to learn to ride, but never had the opportunity. My daughter loves her horses as well and rode for a number of years. And I supported her horse habit by paying for lessons, shows, equipment, horses, cleaning stalls, cleaning boots, cleaning tack, cleaning horses, watching more lessons than I care to count and cheering her on from the stands at every show. But I never rode myself. Fast forward 25 years. This summer, a friend of mine was just casually talking to me and mentioned a therapeutic riding program in our area. Well, I was drawn to it like bees to honey. Well, maybe flies to manure. But anyways, I now work there one uh, day a week and I absolutely love it. I am able to use my knowledge and skill as a pediatric nurse and my love for horses to serve families in a really unique way. I'm still not riding horses, but I'm enjoying grooming, bathing, feeding, cleaning stalls, helping with lessons, and I love cheering on the little riders and encouraging the families who are working so hard to improve their, the quality of their child's life. I love the environment too. Many of the workers um, who serve there are believers. I am so grateful that God placed me where he knew I'd be blessed and he'd be served, even if it's not in a saddle. Think about opportunities of service you've had to say no to because you didn't have the time. Even think about some of the things that have run through your mind, things that were just too big to even imagine being able to do or think outside of your comfort zone. If you're like me, you say to yourself, oh, I could never do that. I don't have the time, number one, and I don't have the resources. Well, now you have the time and God is into doing the impossible. My husband and I have a dear friend 
who was a pastor at a large Indianapolis church for over 50 years. When he retired, he started a ministry that raised funds to support building uh, hospitals, orphanages, schools, uh, all over the world. Actually, he built them in 62 countries around the world, and he personally oversaw all the projects. Uh, he worked hard and traveled extensively until he was 90 years old. Seemingly impossible? Yes, for us, but not for God. So while you're dreaming big and thinking out of the box, remember service to the Lord does not necessarily have to be a church-related or a faith-based activity. We are called to be salt and light to the world. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 and to be ready to share about the hope that is in us to anyone at any time. 1 Peter 3.15 We are ambassadors for Christ wherever we go, not just in church. Also, think about the life experiences you've had. The longer we live, the more of them we have. Some good, some not so good. But 2 Corinthians 1.4 tells us he comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. This could be a cancer diagnosis, a loss of a spouse or a child, divorce, caring for elderly parents, or dealing with difficult teens. That's just naming a few. I'm sure you can think of many others. But don't be frightened away because you're not a licensed therapist or a psychiatrist or a social worker. We are called to serve them with the comfort and peace and hope that we've experienced in similar situations, not to fix their problems. Lastly, but certainly not least, think about the different serving opportunities this pandemic has presented. We don't have to look too far. Family, friends, neighbors, many of them have been impacted more than we know or more than they care to share about. But sometimes just asking the right question at the right time will open up an opportunity for service. Like, well, how can I pray for you? How are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you? But remember, don't ask if you're not willing to hear the answer and respond to it. God has been preparing us for serving in retirement all along. As children of God, saved, redeemed, and forgiven, the status of our relationship with him never changes. But his work in us has added layers of heartfelt depth to our lives that he can, use to, for, he can use to bless others and to bring glory to himself. We are all unique, and God purposefully made us that way. We are all fit for service, because service opportunities come in all shapes and sizes. They can fit into any lifestyle, any schedule, any ability, or any limitation that we might have. There are no rules in the Bible about regarding serving, so we don't need to make any up. Remember, keep looking for ways God is answering your prayers for guidance and direction. He knows better than we do how and where he would, we can serve him best. It's not a great idea to say yes to serving because everybody else said no. Here are some questions to ask yourself before committing to serve. What is the time commitment? Is it one time? Is it every week? Is it monthly? Does it go on for months? Number two, does it conflict with other obligations to family or church? Number three, do I have any gifts or talents that could be used here? 
Number four, is my heart in it? God loves a cheerful giver of money, our tithe, but also he loves a cheerful giver of our time. What is my motivation for saying yes? I would encourage you to start small and slow. Don't burn yourself out in the first few months of retirement. Everyone knows you're more available, so choose wisely. And besides that, there's many components to retirement that need to be addressed. Perhaps even setting up new insurance or uh, making a move to a different location or catching up on things that you've let go too long, like doctors or dental appointments. God wants us to be physically fit for service too. He knows every detail of our lives and he wants to offer us opportunities to serve, but he also wants us to make good decisions in choosing them. It's better to say no before you commit to something than after you're already committed to it. Some people enjoy spur of the moment or spontaneous service, I prefer to call it, more than others. They are the ones that show up immediately to help with a particular need, babysitting, fixing a meal, buying a bag of groceries, providing transportation, hugging a neck, sitting in a hospital waiting room, uh, and praying. Those are just naming a few. Service is not measured by quantity or quality, but rather by willingness to give our time, talents, and gifts in service to God and blessing others even if it means at a moment's notice. When I want to help someone at a moment's notice, I stop and try and think what they need, what they may want, or what they may enjoy. It reminds me of that old song, People to People. One line says, how can you tell a hungry man about the bread of life? So true. We may need to meet their immediate needs first, like feeding them, so they know that we really do care about them. Listen to the hints that they give you in normal conversation and follow their lead. Most of us at our age have a pretty good idea of what our spiritual gifts are, and using them in service to the Lord is being a good steward of them. A biblical review might be helpful in helping you choose uh, a particular activity. And there's a good list found in 1 Corinthians 12. So look there. But they are not a prerequisite for serving. They are no more or no less important than our God-given time and talents and abilities and lack of them in a particular particular area does not excuse us for service if God has called us there. Remember, it's God working in and through us, and he can use anyone who's willing. Along with gifts, talents, life experiences, and spiritual gifts that you've been given, think about your personality traits, your likes and dislikes. We don't always get to serve alongside our best friends, or we don't always, aren't always called to reach out to people who look, think, and act like us. We are all human and have different personalities that can clash or be exaggerated in stressful situations. But we must remember to keep our focus on glorifying God. Being aware of your likes and dislikes and personal preferences, quirks, uh, can also help choose, you choose the right time, place, and type of service. For instance, ask yourself, do I work better by myself or with others? Am I more task-oriented or people-oriented? Do I enjoy physical activity or more mental activity? Am I an early riser or a night owl? Am I a homebody or someone who likes to be out and about? Do I like to be indoors or outdoors? Do I, am I okay with spontaneous activities or do I like things pretty well planned out? 
Do I take direction well or do I want to be in charge? Do I have strong organizational skills and like things neat and tidy or does that really not matter to me? Am I more outgoing or introverted? It also can be helpful to ask a family member or a close friend, where do you see me uh, giving service to the Lord? What activities do you think I would be uh, well suited for? Network with family and friends and neighbors, your pastor and women's ministry leader, perhaps even community leaders, and keep your eyes, ears, heart, and mind open. And I have no doubt that you will find your place of service or it will find you, whether it's with your time, your talents, or your finances. We established early on in this talk that our service to the Lord is a lifelong endeavor, but that does not mean that a spe specific activity or assignment needs to be. Feeling the need to move on is not a failure. God moves many people in his service and he definitely can move you and fill your old spot. So don't feel guilty, but remember you have been an ambassador for Christ there. So leave a good impression behind. Give plenty of notice if possible. Offer to orient the new person if time allows. Keep in contact with friends new believers especially, with text and email, that it becomes so much more easy. Write a note of thanks and encouragement for the good work that they are doing there. And finally, don't burn your bridges because you may be called back to serve there again. Service to the Lord at any age is not something we can just check off our to-do list but rather a lifelong attitude of giving and sharing what we've been given, paying it forward as the expression goes, because we want to thank, to praise, and to glorify the God who is the giver of every good and perfect gift, as James 1.17 tells us. Well, have I made service sound exciting or exhausting? Do you need a nap? Well, guess what? God cares about you as much as he cares about the people that you are serving. He does want us to have some me time. God created the Sabbath because he knew we would need rest. Service can be physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausting and spiritually challenging as well. We need to relax and recharge ourselves and to enjoy the blessings that he has given us, family, friends, hobbies, sports, his beautiful creation, vacations. Are you thinking of some right now? Our desire to put him first as, our, as his hands and feet does not go unrewarded. His word assures us of that. Psalm 1611 tells us that in God's presence is abundant joy. At his right hand are eternal pleasures. He is where the joy is. Proverbs 1125 says a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And finally, friends, quit worrying about your gray hair, your muffin tops, and your wrinkles. And thank God for his gift of longevity. Psalm 91.16 says, With a long life I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. So enjoy your naps, your bubble baths, and your beaches. But remember, it's not about counting your days. It's about making your days count. May God richly bless you as you continue to serve him. Thank you for listening. It's been great being with you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your work here on earth. Help us to love others through serving, always remembering to give you the glory. 
Keep us faithful in our commitments and always willing to share the hope that is in us. We look forward to the day that we will hear, well done, my good and faithful service. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Thank you. Bye.